Good afternoon and welcome to uh, what kind of Thursday is it, everyone? A tired Thursday. That's the same thing my morning class said. It's a tired Thursday. I usually like some superlative adjective like terrific or 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 or. Or I guess it's a tired Thursday because that's all I can come up with. So yes, tired Thursday. Uh, we're going to go over our exam review, uh, and I'm going to cover our exam, our test review, and I am going to cover all the concepts as well. So here we have um, this requires here uh, things to be plugged in. Why is this? It is plugged in. Okay, good. Um, binomial multiplication. These are called binomials. They have two terms in them. And you can tell that they're two different terms because they're connected by addition or subtraction. If it was multiplication, like this is two times X, that's still just one term. It's one term connected by multiplication. Uh, if you're connect by addition or subtraction, that splits it into different terms. Okay, so here we go. X minus three times X plus seven. The idea is to remember to use FOIL to find all of your terms. So you can, and I encourage you to, have a different color or just uh, know that you're drawing the arrows on top. You do first times first, outer times outer, inner times inner, and last times last. Okay, you're going to have these things like a dot and then you do it. And when you do it, it looks like this. X times X is X times X is X squared. X squared. X times 7 is 7 times X. So we write that as 7X. Uh, negative 3 times x is negative 3x, so we write that as negative 3x, and negative 3 times 7 is negative 21. We write it like that. We can have an equal sign here. The meaning of the equal sign is this is equal to this. And then I see I have 7 apples, and I take away 3 apples. Johnny has 7 apples, and then Isaiah takes away 3 apples. How many apples will Johnny have? Four. How do you like them apples? X plus 4X minus 21. Okay? And so that would be done final answer. That can't be expanded or simplified anymore. Now, this one here has is a little bit different in that it has uh, some numbers next to the X's, but that shouldn't bother us. Again, we're going to go first times first, outer times outer, inner times inner, and last times last. That's our FOIL rule there. That's our FOIL rule. So 2x times 5x, that's equal to, I can use an equal sign here, 10, because that's 2 times 5. And then x times x is x squared. Okay. So there's 10x squared from 2x times 5x. Now we do 2x times negative 8. 2 times negative 8 is negative 16 times x is negative 16x. 3 times 5x, it gives us plus 15x. And plus 3 times minus 8 is minus 24. Collecting our like terms gives us 10x squared. There's no other x squared to collect that with, so that's just it. Negative 16x plus 15x. If it was negative 16 degrees yesterday and today is 15 degrees warmer, What's the temperature today? Minus 1. So we just write that as minus x. That's minus 1x. So negative 16 plus 15 is just minus 1. And this is how it's going to be written because it's x. Minus 24. Okay, so that's how we do this one. Oh, this one is tricky. But this one follows the same principle. This is not x squared minus 25. It's also not x squared plus 25. There's also a minus 10x in here, and I'll show you why show you why. There we go. So this, I would write this to look like that. So it's going to look like this. This is equal to x minus 5 multiplied by x minus 5. Okay, That's the meaning of x minus 5 squared. It means take that thing and multiply it by itself. So that's, that's the meaning of this uh, squared up here. So let's write out this. This is x times x is x squared x times minus 5 is minus 5x, minus 5 times x is minus 10x total. Then minus 5 times minus 5 is plus 25. So this is an example of what we would call a perfect square trinomial. Okay, It has two factors that are the same thing. Johnny? Why isn't that x uh, x squared? 
because it's a tired Thursday. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Thank you very much. It keeps me honest. I would lose marks on the test, but Johnny saved me. That's good. So here I have five multiplied by X minus two multiplied by X plus one. This is just a number. That's just a number. Once I know X, it's just some number times some number times some number. Let's say X is three. That would be five times three minus two is five times one and then three plus one. So this would be five times one times four. This would be 20 if X is three. We know that as we change the value of X, this will make a parabola. But that's not what we're interested in right now. We're just interested in expressing that in standard form, which is going to look like these. Here, I have the option of doing the multiplication in any order I want. So um, yesterday I was doing it where I did the 5 multiplying in last. So let's do that first. Today I'm going to multiply this 5 into this bracket. But I could also multiply it into that bracket. It doesn't much matter. Okay, 5x minus 2. So that's 5x minus 10. And that's still in brackets. That's going to multiply x plus 1. Okay. So now I have the result of 5 times x minus 2. That's here. And then I'm told multiply the result of that by this. Okay. So now I'm going to go over here. I'm going to do 5x times x to give me 5x squared. 5x times 1 to give me plus 5x Minus 10 times x to give me minus 10x. And minus 10 times 1 to give me minus 10. Okay. Now, all right. Now I can uh, collect my like terms. And now it would be 5x squared minus 5x minus 10. Notice that I could common factor that. I could take a 5 out of everything. And I would have 5 multiplied by x squared minus x minus 2. That would have been the result of doing this first. And then having the 5 on the outside. And that's where we're going next, people. We're going to common factoring. So here, let's take a look at common factoring down here. Common factoring means we want to find the biggest number. So here, there's numbers here. 18, 9, 12. Here, we got 3 and 18. Find the biggest number and the biggest power of variables that we can divide these different things by, and then write a monomial times a polynomial. Okay. So here, the first thing that I look for is what's the biggest number that I can pull out of all these numbers as a multiplicative factor. So if I take out 18, then that would be 9 divided by 18 is 1 half, and 12 divided by 18 is 2 thirds. That would be a little awkward to take 18 out. 3 is correct. All of these numbers are divisible by 3. Is there anything bigger that I could take out of all of these numbers? Bigger than 3? No. no, 3 is the biggest. So it's going to be some, some 3. And then I want to take out some x's and y's as well. And I look through here. I see x squared, x to the 1, and x to the 3. So the greatest number of x's I can take out is here. So I'm going to really like zero in on that x as my limiting factor. And then same thing for the y's. There's only a single y there, so that one's my limiting factor. Or that one here, limiting factor. There's extra y's there. Okay? So I think about those things. And then I'm ready to take out a single x and a single y. So that would be 3xy multiplied by the result of dividing this from that. So if I divide 3xy out of 18x squared y, I would be left with 18 divided by 3 is 6. x squared divided by x is just a single x. And y divided by y is 1, so I don't need to write that. Plus, because this is plus here, 9 divided by 3 is 3. x divided by x is nothing, so I don't have to write anything there. And y to the 3 divided by y gives me y squared, y to the 2 plus 12 divided by 3, 4. x to the 3 divided by x is x squared. And y divided by y is just 1. So that's done final answer. People have questions here? Johnny. How, how do you know where to put all the variables? La, so, like these variables here? Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't so much putting them there as I was looking at these terms here. 
And what I want to make sure is that when I re-expand this, if I want to check my answer, I just take this and I multiply it in here and I multiply it in here and then I multiply it in there. Okay. And that should recreate this line because I've used an equal sign here, right? So I'm saying this is equal to that. Okay, so when I multiply this by this, I get 3 times 6 is 18, x times x is x squared, and y is just y. Okay, 3 times 3 is 9, uh, x times nothing there is just x, and y times y squared is y cubed. And, and how do you know to get 3xy right off the bat? Is that just what you do all the time? Oh, there? Um, we talked about the biggest factor that I can take out well, of these numbers. Oh, and then the x, y? Well, here I, I, I can't take x, y, z out because there's no z's here, right? But um, I can take a single x and a single y because I'm limited by this x. I can only take one x, and I'm limited by that y. I can only take one y. Okay? I'll do another example where I can take bigger things out in just a second. Here with this example, I, the only thing I want to show you with this example is that sometimes... You take out a common factor that's as big as one of the terms. So here, I can actually take out um, 3x from all of this. So if I do that, it's going to look like this. 3x multiplied by, what's 3x divided by 3x? 1 plus 6x. Okay. Now when I multiply this back in, that 1 is like a target that allows me to have the 3x back here. So 3x times 1 creates 3x. If I didn't do that, if I just had 6x here, then I would have 18x squared without that 3x. That would not be correct. Did that one's add, important. Did you have to add one? No, I didn't add one. Um, I looked at this term, and I said, that's actually my greatest common factor. So when I divide this out and I put it in front here with common factoring, I need a 1 there. So that when I multiply this back in, and I multiply that times that, I get 3x. And then I multiply this times this, and I get 18x squared. Okay, so um, when you divide, you get rid of the squared, right? Uh, in this case, yeah, because I have x squared divided by x. And uh, if I have x times x, which is x squared, divided by x, that cancels that and just equals x. Yeah, I took I divide by three x y, so I took out one of the x's and one of the y's of each one of these terms to create so these. The, uh, the power three. Yeah, it reduced this power three to a power two here. You see, and it reduced this power three to a power two, and this one just had an x squared, and it just became a single x. So it just takes out one time. Yep, okay. it's um it's a variation of, and you'll look a lot more closer at this in. Uh, I've done units of this before in grade 10, but not this time. Um, this one here, if I have x to the a divide by x to the b, a and b are just numbers. And this always works out to be x to the a minus b. So some examples would be x to the 4 divided by x to the 2. This is a set of instructions here. It says multiply x by itself four times. This is a set of instructions saying multiply x by itself two times. If I have four x's on top and two x's on the bottom, the top cancels the bottom so that that all goes away and this goes down to a two. Or I could say that this is four minus two equals two on the top. And I promised you another example where I could take out a, a bigger factor. So I'll create an example here. I could have a question like, um, let's use 7x to the 5, y to the 3, plus 49x to the 3, y to the 8, let's say. <laughs> and that would give us, well, we can see 7 is common to both of these things. So I can take a 7 out. And then the biggest factor of x that I can take out is 3, x to the 3. So I can definitely get x to the 3 out of all of these things. And y is also y to the 3 because y to the 8 is bigger. So.
So that's the greatest common factor that I can take out. And I would need to multiply this by x to the 2 to get this. So this would be x squared there. I can look at it. 5 minus 3 is 2. So I can create that. 7 divided by 7 is 1. So I don't have any number there. y to the 3 divided by y to the 3 is just 1. So that's it. And then I would be adding 49 divided by 7 is 7. x to the 3 divided by x to the 3 is 1. And y to the 8 divided by y to the 3 is y to the 5. Uh, the y is because I want the greatest thing that I can pull out of all of it to make this as simple as possible. Okay. Um, one example of when I might do this, like just like um, if I'm doing stuff around and I'm doing math in my life, is I might make use of this skill if I have to add like 1500 plus, I don't know, let's see what, uh, 600. Maybe I can say, well, 15 is common to both of these things. So this is like answering 15 times 100 plus 20. No, sorry, plus 40. And then I can do 100 plus 40 in my head is 140. And then I can multiply that by 15 to get the answer to this. Wait, is that right? No, this is third. No, what? <laughs> this is an awful example. Oh, and it's immortalized in the video forever. No, that's correct, actually. Yeah, so that'll be 140 times 15. There's a bigger factor I can take out. It's 1,500. Sorry, 150. And then that would be 10 plus 4. 150 times 14. All right. Next is trinomial factoring. Okay, hooray, trinomial factoring. There's a few varieties of trinomial factoring that we're going to see. This one is a simple variety. So when I'm doing this one, I want to find two numbers that multiply to C and add to B. And let's recap for ourselves. Y equals AX squared plus BX plus C is what I'm talking about there with B and C. This is the standard form of a quadratic. And my A number in these simple cases is 1. My B number is that and my C number is that. So let's find two numbers that multiply to 14 and add to 9. Multiply to 14 and add to 9. x plus 7 multiplied by x plus 2 is the same thing as x squared plus 9x plus 14. Exactly the same. But this is factored form. It tells us the roots of the parabola which can be very useful. They're also called the solutions of the parabola. And next unit, we'll have some questions on solve these parabolas when this is equal to zero. And they, these would give us our solutions, negative seven and negative two. To test your answers, you go ahead and you apply FOIL, okay? And that's gonna look like this. You're gonna go x times x to give you x squared. You're gonna go x times two to give you plus two x. You're gonna do seven times x to give you plus seven x. And then you're going to do 7 times negative 2 to give you plus 14. And that's proven to yourself once you collect the 2 apples and the 7 apples that Isaiah took from Johnny. And that'll give you back these 9 apples that are rightfully Johnny's there. Okay. Now, don't forget to common factor first. Sometimes you'll see that there's a common factor to take out. Doing these types of factoring where A is not 1 are more challenging. This would be more challenging to factor if you don't factor out this 3 first. So 3 can factor out here. So let's do that. Uh, and we'll do it in, in blue. Okay, so this is equal to 3 multiplied by x squared minus 3 divided by 12 is 4. Still an x. I didn't take any x's out. Minus 63. Ah, how did I know that 3 would divide all these things? How did I know that 63 was divisible by 3? That's not in my times tables. I only know them up to 12. It's 21, yeah. And we can see it because 6 is divisible by 3, 3 is divisible by 3. But also, if I add these two together, I get 9. And if the sum of the digits of a number are divisible by 3, then that number is divisible by 3. So that's how I test, see if it's divisible by 3. So this is minus 21 
Now I have three multiplied by this problem type. Okay. So I know that this can still factor as a trinomial. Now I'm looking for numbers that multiply to negative 21 and add to negative 4. 3 multiplied by, this is what my answer is going to look like. It's going to be 3 multiplied by 2 brackets. And what are my numbers? Going to have x, and one of them is going to be positive, and x, and one of them is going to be negative. I know that they're going to be positive and negative because they multiply to a negative number. And so if I'm multiplying two numbers, get a negative number. One's positive, one's negative. Three and minus seven. Good. Yeah. So there, I just check it. I say plus three, minus seven. That adds together to give me minus four. Multiplies to give me minus 21. Ding, 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 ding is correct. Next, as, as complex cases here. Here we have 6y squared plus 29y plus 9. Okay, so we learned that we can use the x game to break up this middle term. This b term, we can break it into two pieces and then factor it by grouping. So let's take a look at how that works. First, we set up our x over here. And then we're going to have a times c, those numbers. And we're just going to have b on the bottom. And we're looking for two numbers that, multi that uh, multiply together to give us this and add together to give us that. So we'll put 29 down here, and we'll put 6 times 9 here. 6 times 9 is... Thank you. It's tired Tuesday. It's not even Tuesday, it's Thursday. So I'm looking for numbers that multiply to 54 and add to 29. Find these numbers. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't have an answer, but I have a question. Okay, what's your question? Um, so it says we only need X game. Um, so we need X game for all of them? Uh, we only really require it here. Um, yeah, you can draw an X and you can have your C there and your B there. Yeah, because your A and your C are, are still just this. Yeah, yeah you can do that. Yeah, yeah it's, the same. it's the same if A is 1 because A times C is just going to give you your C up here. So here, I notice that 2 times 27 gives me 54. 2 plus 27 gives me 29. So now I'm going to write this as this is equal to 6y squared. And then I'm going to have plus 2y plus 27y plus 9. Okay. Now, I'm going to factor these by grouping, all right? And here's how I create the groups. I'm just going to group uh, these ones together, 6y plus 2y, and then I'm going to group 27 plus 9 together like that. All right? And now I see the biggest common factor I can pull out of this is equal to 2y. So I would have 2y multiplied by 3y. That would create 6y squared when I multiply this back in. And then 2y times 1 gives me this here. All right? And that's going to be plus, I see here the greatest common factor has no variables, but it's just 9. So it's going to be 9 multiplied by 20. Oops, oh, that's wrong. Multiplied by 3y. That would multiply, give me this back, and then plus 1. Notice that I get the same factor twice, and that can be factored out of both of the 2y and the 9. So now I will have my final answer is 2y plus 9 multiplied by 3y plus 1. Done. Final answer. Um. Yep. Could you put the 3 outside of the bracket and reverse it, like the 3 and the 9, or does it have to be the 3? It's just a random question. Where? Uh, the right 3? 
Oh, could I bring three out as a common factor? Yeah. Yeah, but then I would have, this would be 9y plus 3, and 9y plus 3 is just three times this. And so I would just be more comfortable bringing out the extra 3, but, because that allows me to have the same factor here and here. But what would it be wrong if you did, like, just in case of... You would need another line. You're not done your common factoring, right? Oh, okay. When you're doing your common factoring, Johnny, you want to take the biggest factor possible out. Like, oh, uh, yeah. There might be times where you want to keep some of that in there, but um, by the time you've mastered this, you'll be able to spot those situations and you'll be at the point of being able to play. Right now, we're learning how the bishop moves and how the knight moves and how all the different pieces of the chessboard move. And I understand that it feels a little arbitrary and not as exciting as playing the game. Once you master this stuff, now you're playing the game. And you'll be able to apply these things to various situations. You'll be able to uh, attack special cases like chess problems and things. Yeah. yeah. Now, don't forget that there's difference of squares. And these factor the same as trinomials, except they have a B of 0. So here we're looking for numbers that multiply to negative 64 and add to 0. But they also factor in such a special way, we, we think about them as a special type of factoring. So... Yeah, so here we have x squared minus 64. Uh, what is it? Uh, plus 8 minus 8. Yeah, so you have x plus 8 multiplied by x minus 8. Very good. So this is the difference of squares, okay? Um, yeah, and so that's uh, that's the result of that. Okay, so that's, that's what you get. And you can test these just the same by expanding. So if I expand... And multiply, I'd get x times x is x squared. Negative x time, negative 8 times x is negative 8x. This is plus 8x. And this is negative 64. So that would give me x squared plus 8x minus 8x. Not in that order, but whatever. Minus 64. Okay? And then these are 0, so they go away. So it's just x squared minus 64. So these are indeed the same thing. And these always factor in this way. The square root of that goes here and here. The square root of that goes here and here after all alternating signs. So now let's do this one. 144 minus g squared. Alexander. Well, uh, it's your big number. Oh, wait, no. G minus g plus yeah. Uh -huh. G plus 12 in brackets. Not quite. Yeah. Sorry. Here, whichever one is coming after the minus oh, wait, is going to be the one that has a sign flipped. Oh, wait, minus G. Yeah, 12 plus G times 12 minus G. Okay. So... When we graph difference of squares, and we're going to see the difference of squares always have their vertex along the y-axis, but there's two flavors of these parabolas. Some of them come up like this, and they have negative a values like this, negative g squared. And this parabola would have roots at negative 12 and positive 12. Okay, This one. This one here is the other flavor. It's um, this flavor of parabola. And it uh, has roots at negative 8 and positive 8. See, this one has a positive A value, positive 1. This one has a negative A value of negative 1. So they're just parabolas that open in opposite directions, but they both have vertices along the y-axis. Johnny? Uh, why is 1 a plus and 1 a minus? Where? Here? 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 Yeah. Here? Oh, because here it's minus g squared, you see? Okay. So then I would have one there and one there. Now, this would not be fully factored form. If I want to write this in factored form, I need to factor the negative 1 out of here. It would look like this. This would be the same as saying negative 1 times uh, g plus 12 times g minus 12. That's the same thing. This term, I just changed the order of these things, okay? And then I flip the sign of this, so I flip the sign of the whole thing to get it back to the same. If you expand that, you'll find it does equal this. One more question type. It's a big charty type question type. You're going to see a chart like this tomorrow. So let me show you the chart. Given the quad... 
the, that's the one that I had in the test. I'm going to have to give you a new one on the test. No, no, <laughs> it's no. Tired Thursday, it's fine, everybody. So given this quadratic relation, y is equal to x squared plus 10x plus 21. Okay. Where is this y-intercept? 21. It's a 21. Yeah. So it's at the point, actually, I would prefer to use this because we should write it as a point, because a y-intercept is a point. So the y-intercept is at 0 in the x and 21 in the y. And we can see that from here. Okay. Now I've been asked for the x-intercept. So where does this parabola touch the y-axis? How? Yeah, where does it touch the x-axis? How would we find that? We're going to turn it into factored form. So let's do that. Y is equal to two numbers that multiply to 21 and add to 10. Y is equal to X plus 7 times X plus 3. Now we have the information we need to find where it touches the X intercept. Then remember, this is a place where someone might make a, a super embarrassing error. Does anyone Is anyone feeling brave that they might be able to tell us where this thing touches the x-axis. Hannah. Um, negative 7 and negative 3. Beautiful. Oh, where is the That's right. You remembered to flip the signs. Why is that true? Take a moment if you're a little confused and answer the question why this is true. If I input negative 7 here, this would be negative 7 plus 7. That would be 0. 0 times negative 7 plus 3. This would be negative 4. This would be 0 times negative 4. Y is 0 times something. Y is 0. That's how that creates a 0. This one here, negative 3 plus 3, that would be 0. Okay, And uh, then that times this, which would be positive 4, that would make 0. We can also test them here. Watch this. X squared, negative 7. So that's 49, 49 plus negative 70, 49 minus 70 is, uh, it's tired Tuesday, it's uh, 21, negative 21, negative 21 plus 21, zero. Okay, so that worked. All right, let's try negative three. Now that would be nine squared because negative three squared is positive nine. Nine minus 30 is negative 21, also a zero. So it's a zero there and it's a zero there. It's just much easier to spot it here. There you would need to do tables of values and check, 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 check. Here you can just see if you remember to flip the signs. Okay. Where's the axis of symmetry of this parabola? Minus five. Minus X is equal to minus five. The axis of symmetry is a line. Lines have equations. X is equal to minus five is that line. Okay, now, what's the optimum value? The optimum value is the value of y at the vertex. So we can test it either here or here. So if I'm testing it up here with standard form, it would look like this. y is equal to bracket negative 5 plus 7 multiplied by negative 5 plus 3. Okay. So that would be 2 times negative 2, and uh, 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Where do you get 2 from? Negative 5 plus 7 oh. is 2, and then negative 5 plus 3 is negative 2. So 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Okay, let's check up here in this one. Y is equal to bracket negative 5 squared plus... 10 times negative 5 plus 21. Okay. Yeah, this is checking in standard form. Negative 5 squared, 25 plus negative 50. So that's negative 25, negative 25 plus 1, plus sorry, 21, negative 4. It is the same. It is the same. Because these two things are the same, they just look different. Okay, let's keep going with our chart. Where's the vertex? Minus five, minus four. 
That's right. Write it as a point, minus 5, comma, minus 4. Okay, so we get our points 0, 21, negative 7, 0, negative 3, 0. And we've got a big old fat chunk of graph paper. We need to be able to show a 21 on here. So where should I put my axes? Yeah, let's put the X well down there. We want to go as low. We only need as low as negative 4. So I'm going to put on my axes here. I'm going to draw them here. Here's my Y axis. Not really. You're too kind. And then I'm going to go along here. And let's count. Did I get 21 up here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It doesn't look like it. 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Try as we might, we were set up for failure. Oh, my goodness. So we could number these every two, but ain't nobody got want to do that. Okay, so we're going to put it up there. Here is our y-intercept way up here. This was 16, so that would be 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, about there. Okay, it's about there. It's all right. That's the point zero, 21. Okay. I'm going to give you a question that fits on the graph. I'm glad that this question is not on the test. Uh, and then I want the point negative seven, zero and negative three, zero. So I'm going to put that over here. Here's one, two, negative three, zero, negative four, negative five, negative six, negative seven, zero. And then here is the vertex at negative five, negative four. It's down here. There's negative five, negative four. I know that these two points are on the parabola just by its stretch factor. And I know that uh, I went up by one, three, I'm gonna go up by five. So over one and up one, two, three, four, five. And then up by seven, just using the stretch factor of the parabola. So uh, one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I could even check my work and see, do I go up by nine to get up to the y-intercept there? And indeed that is. So then let's try and hit all these points with a beautiful pinky purpley parabola. <laughs> Ew. Ew. Oh, it was just now now it feels like empty praise. Okay, so there you go. That's how you sketch a parabola using factoring. Uh, it allows you to find the zeros, and then you can use that to find the vertex, and then you can just uh, joink your parabola through those points. If someone drew that, what mark would you give them? What mark you want me to give them? A zero? Okay. All right. All right, fine. I'll give you a zero. Uh, and now it's like golf. Uh, low marks are good. Okay, so those are all the question types that you will see tomorrow. So this is a video that will be live in the D2L for all time. And if you want to troll me, you can make a YouTube comment um, about how it must have been a, a really, must be nice to have an excuse like you're tired, Mr. Jennings, for your general level of idiocy. And then uh, my self-confidence will be knocked down to just a slight peg. Sorry? Right. Yeah. You can call it the jankiest parabola you ever done seen. Ta-ta for now, everyone.